Hi, this is Pamela from the Encourage Your Wellness Podcast. And today I have Dr. Heather Stone. She's one of the top functional medicine practitioners in the world. She has over 20 years of clinical experience in private practice. During that time, she has successfully helped thousands of women overcome symptoms of hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. And her thyroid transformation blueprint has been used by hundreds of doctors. Thank you so much for being here and can't wait to learn more about thyroid health and how we take care of this. It seems like many of my friends go through this and kind of not sure what to do next. Yes, it is very, very common. There's millions of ladies who really suffer from this and um, really suffer needlessly. So how do you know sort of when you've potentially got a thyroid problem and then what do you do and who do you see and um, what do you do next? Yeah. So typically the symptoms that we have when we're dealing with low thyroid, um, will start to gain weight. We'll have low energy or fatigue. It's hard for you to sleep at night. Um, whether that's you, it's a hard, you have a hard time falling asleep or staying asleep. Um, ladies will experience constipation or diarrhea or IBS symptoms of, of really any kind. And they may even have anxiety and depression. And so that those clump of symptoms, like if you Googled any of the combination of those symptoms, you'd probably see, uh, you need to check your thyroid. So those symptoms are pretty classic for someone who is experiencing, um, low thyroid or an underfunctioning thyroid. And so. So you suspect that it's a thyroid and then do you immediately have to go on a medication or what sort of test can you protect, potentially run to see if there might be something else going on in addition to this that might be causing it? Or how would you typically kind of help somebody navigate? Well, traditionally in, um, in traditional medicine, they run a one marker. They run a marker called TSH. If you're lucky, they will do a TSH with a thyroid panel, which includes three additional markers to see if you have hypothyroid, right? Hypothyroid means that you have an under-functioning or low thyroid hormones. So in, in traditional medicine, they will immediately put you on thyroid medication and to get those thyroid hormones normal. And typically they tell you, um, you know, all your symptoms are going to go away in a couple of weeks and you're going to feel amazing and come back and see me. And sometimes six months or even a year, they will wait to see if they've balanced out these thyroid hormones. But unfortunately, when you're dealing with the thyroid gland, it's not usually that easy. Some ladies do experience results after taking the thyroid medication, and they don't really have to deal with all of those symptoms anymore, but that's really few and far between. Most of us who have low thyroid, um, there's a lot of other things going on underneath the surface that aren't addressed. Um, in addition to just making sure that your thyroid hormones are normal, there's um, at least 11 or 12 different markers that really complete a full thyroid panel that really should be run. And there's many different combinations of imbalances that can be going on with the thyroid. But traditionally, they're just looking to see if you have primary hypothyroid and they apply the um, hormone replacement therapy, which you will essentially be on for the rest of your life. And then, you know, if you still have symptoms after you're on those th that thyroid medication, then they start medicating all the other symptoms, right? Like if you can't sleep, they'll give you sleeping pills. If you have anxiety or depression, they'll give you psychotropic drugs and, and on and on and on. But in the functional world, we know that your body gives you symptoms because something is not right, because there is some kind of underlying imbalance. And the goal is not just to suppress the symptom, but to really understand what's causing the symptom, where is the underlying imbalance, and then that tells us what do we need to do to help the body actually move forward and heal so that the symptom goes away. And so there's many different imbalances that we deal with with the thyroid, and one of the most common imbalances is an underlying autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's, and most of the time that's not even checked for, and the reason they don't check for that is because it doesn't really change their um, way of treatment. So essentially, if someone has Hashimoto's in the traditional model, they're still getting put on thyroid hormones. And that's the extent of the solutions that they have for dealing with these issues. But 
we know when you're dealing with an underlying autoimmune condition, there's so many other imbalances and triggers and components to helping someone truly resolve these symptoms. Yes. So when my son had autoimmune encephalitis, I learned how to do a deep dive into inflammation and what in the world is causing this inflammation. And it could be a million different things, but really understanding how to put a, a micro um, microscope on your life and say, okay, so what is inflammation? What causes it? What's potentially in my environment? Tell us a little bit about how you kind of help get to the bottom and find out what symptoms could really be exasperating. And it, from our experience, it wasn't just one thing. There's a number of things that kind of layer in and create like your body saying, okay, enough. Um, how do you take a look at that? Yeah, I think first, it's really important to understand that the body works together. And one of the biggest mistakes that we make is that we always take a myopic approach, meaning like we are only focused on the thyroid, right? Or, you know, if you have any other autoimmune condition, you, you focus in on essentially the victim or the organ system or gland that's not functioning properly. But in reality, we have to understand that with any autoimmune condition, you have to balance out the immune system. Right. So like when we're dealing with thyroid specifically, the thyroid is attacking and kill, I'm sorry, the immune system is attacking and killing the thyroid. Right. So everybody focuses on the thyroid and what thyroid hormones they're on is and is their TSH normal and increasing and decreasing the dosage of their thyroid medication. But if we would back up a little bit and come up 10,000 feet and we said, OK, the real problem is with your immune system. And your immune system is out of balance and it is recognizing your thyroid as something that doesn't belong there or something's wrong with your thyroid. So what is it that is causing the immune system to have that behavior? Now, you can substitute anything in there for the thyroid, right? Anytime we have an autoimmune condition, whether it's the joints, right, with RA or lupus, your connective tissue, or is it, you know, your brain or whatever autoimmune condition it is, it doesn't matter. You have to balance the immune system. So then we ask a deeper question, well, what's triggering the immune system to attack the body? And you're right. There's many layers and there's many different triggers. And the crazy thing is, is that all of us are really different. So we'll have different combinations of triggers that each of us are dealing with as an individual. So the big triggers that we look at, or I look at as a practitioner, number one is our blood sugar and insulin resistance and insulin surges. Because when we have, when we eat bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, cookies, cakes, candy, soda, um, any of those things that make your blood sugar go up or make you have a blood sugar surge, well, you're also going to have an insulin surge. So when we have insulin surges, not only is that making us gain weight, but it'll trigger the immune system to attack the body. And that in turn causes another insulin surge. So we get stuck in these bi-directional feed forward pathways and it just starts winding up, right? So blood sugar is huge. And most of us have a blood sugar issue, especially if we struggle with weight, even though you may not have been diagnosed with, let's say, prediabetes or diabetes, this whole blood sugar thing starts way before that, even when we're dealing with more like hypoglycemia. So blood sugar is a huge trigger that most Americans are dealing with. Now, the other triggers that we look at are adrenal function. How well are your adrenal glands adapting to stress? Stress levels play a huge role here as well. Um, estrogen and testosterone surges will cause the immune system to attack the body. Um, as well as mold toxins or any other biotoxins, including Lyme, uh, heavy metal toxins, environmental toxins, food sensitivities, leaky gut. So there's layers and layers of triggers that we will be dealing with when we have an autoimmune condition. And I think a lot of the frustration especially I, I would say not just with people dealing with low thyroid and Hashimoto's, but most autoimmune conditions, because 
when you get diagnosed with an autoimmune condition, in Western medicine, the solution is to shut down the immune system, right? With different biologics. With Hashimoto's, they don't do that because the, the side effects of those drugs are worse than what we're dealing with. So they just put you on thyroid hormones and hope for the best and medicate all the other symptoms. And, you know, if you get another autoimmune condition down the road, well, we'll handle that when we get there. And another, you know, risk is thyroid cancer and we'll handle that when we get there. I even had a patient say that her doctor told her, oh, you have thyroid cancer. Oh, that's the best one to have. <laughs> I was like, what? She's like, yes, thyroid cancer is the best one that you could have because, you know, the risk of death is very low. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we have, we really are, have a convoluted way of picturing and understanding health and, and really striving for optimal health versus just managing this disease processes that we're dealing with. But when we're dealing with autoimmunity, you, a lot of times we'll start uh, focusing on one trigger, even though we're dealing with like 10 triggers, right? And you said something about inflammation. Inflammation is a huge trigger. And I've had patients say, well, if I have a lot of inflammation, why don't I just take ibuprofen or take an Advil or take something like that? I'm like, no that doesn't get rid of the inflammation like that. That is, there's all kinds of issues that you're creating when you do that. And you're not handling the underlying cause of the inflammation. Well, why don't I just take anti-inflammatories? I'm like, even if it's a natural anti-inflammatory, which, you know, curcumin and all the antioxidants, yes, that's good. But if you have an underlying infection, if you have underlying biotoxins or heavy metals or environmental toxins, that inflammation is really never going away. And yes, you might be suppressing it a little bit, but it's not really going to resolve the issue where you get, you know, noticeable results. But when we're dealing with autoimmunity, it is more complex than just taking a pill. It's more complex than working on one trigger. You have to do comprehensive testing to understand all the triggers that you're dealing with and really start to work on those at the same time in order to actually get, you know, make some progress. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, overwhelming for most people as they're going through this. Um, and what I found was it's really important to take notes and track your symptoms and write down what you're doing, what you're not doing, because everybody will ask you, you know, what you have been doing and it's hard to remember. And, um, so when you're starting to get somebody help, uh, do you find that all of it is blood tests or do you also have some that could be saliva or urine or stool? Um, I think a lot of people are afraid of blood work. Um, and then some, some doctors won't even order it because they say it's too expensive. It's not needed. You know, what do you do? Um, well, for me personally, as a practitioner, I do all kinds of testing, not on every patient every time, but I always do comprehensive testing when someone starts. And then we go as deep as we need to go to really understand um, the complexity and the cause of each person's you know, issues. So yes, I do very extensive blood work. And when you're playing the insurance game, it becomes kind of tricky because insurance companies want an ICD-10 code or a diagnosis code to justify the testing that you're doing. And they will say, well, you know, homocysteine. Yeah, I think that the diagnosis codes that you listed um, don't justify running homocysteine. So the patient will all of a sudden get a bill for $250 for that one marker. And, um, and then... The clinicians, we get nasty letters from insurance companies threatening um, that they are going to sue us or there's going to be some kind of repercussions for ordering all of these tests because they don't want to pay for all of these testing. So the clinicians are in a, a an interesting and difficult situation because they have to play the game that they're in. And you know, on my side of things, we, I am a member of a co-op. So a bunch of doctors d get together and we buy down the cost of, of blood work and we go the cash route. So like my comprehensive testing, normally, if we went through insurance would be about $3,500. 
But our testing is, I think, about $360. And so it's about 10% of what gets billed to insurance. That's and that's where, savings. isn't that crazy? It's when you go through insurance and then they kick it out, it makes it makes doing the blood work almost you know cost prohibitive for most patients if they do it that way. But if you are with a doctor who is a part of a co-op and we can do it in a way where it's affordable for most people, that gives us more um, flexibility to run saliva testing or urine testing or um, stool testing for sure. So we do blood, urine, um, and saliva on every single patient. In the urine, we do a Dutch test so we can look at adrenal function, hormones, um, and we do very extensive blood and stool testing so that we can see what all's going on. And then from there, maybe we do um, toxicity testing where we're looking for mycotoxins or heavy metals and environmental toxins. And there's so much testing that we can do and that we do, um, do depending on the patient that's in front of us. So finding someone that you can add to your team, right? There is a certainly a time and place for Western medicine, um, but also on your team, if you're really looking to optimize health and address these underlying issues and not just find the disease and apply a medication or a surgery for the disease, but you really want to resolve symptoms and optimize your health, you have to take a, a bit of a different approach in order to do that. And I think most of the frustration comes from trying to go the, the Western medicine route, but expecting the results of a functional medicine route. And that's where we get really frustrated. Yeah. So when people are looking for a doctor, it's definitely a great idea to have a, a regular doctor in, in your corner, also looking for a functional or an integrative doctor in your corner. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I, I kind of like in health and wellness now to if you're going to do a major project on your house, you're probably going to shop around a little bit. And I think it's really important if you've got a nasty symptom or a nasty diagnosis to really do a, do a lot of research and talk to a lot of different doctors. Um, unfortunately, there's just kind of, there's so much information now. Um, there's so much potential education out there. It's, um, it's really hard to make sure that you're getting what's best for you on an individual personalized treatment plan, I think. Yeah. And I think it's important because now we're in a place where we can be and we need to be our own advocate, right? So you you have to take control over your own health and you can't expect someone else to care more about your health than you do. And I think that now with the access to all the information that we have, the more you know research that we do, the more empowered we become, the more that we can be selective about the people that we work with. And kind of like when you're building a house, you don't have one person building the whole house, right? You've got an electrician, you've got an architect, you've got all kinds of people helping you with this um, masterpiece that you're trying to, to build and your health should really be no different. Yeah. Well, and if people want to learn more, they want to understand more about thyroid, Hashimoto's, autoimmune, how do they find you and where should they potentially look? So the best place to find me is on Facebook. And I have a Facebook group called Happy, Healthy, and Lean. So if they'll just search that group, you'll you'll find that I have about 30,000 ladies in there right now. And it is um, it is such a great group. Everybody is so supportive on their health journey. And we have patients from, or people, not they're not all patients, people from some that are just beginning their journey, some that have been on this journey for decades. Um, and it's such a great support system. Um, the other place they can find me is I um, wrote a book, The Thyroid Transformation Blueprint, and they can find that on Amazon. Also, I um, have a link where they can get two free chapters online and um, I'll make sure that you have all of that information. That's super. And then for any doctors that are listening, what type of co-op group did you find and join? Um, we use uh, Evexia Diagnostics. So Evexia, um, we've been with Evexia for decades now. <laughs> so um, they're a really great group and um, they're really great with your doctors. That's super. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Stone. We really, really appreciate having you on. All right. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>